Greetings and welcome to Austin, Texas Gardening. My name is Matthew Watrich and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new, today I'm gonna to be doing my summer garden tour. It is Friday, June the 2nd, and I'm gonna be showcasing all of the fruits and vegetables that I'm growing in the raised bed behind me. I've got tomatoes, jalapenos, carrots, and a bunch of other things. My winter garden, which has gone to seed, and of course, my backyard orchard. Uh, over here to my right, we've got this wonderful Tex Prince peach tree, which is my last peach tree. I've kind of done a staggered uh, harvest of my backyard orchard, and so we've already had a whole bunch of peaches, but for I thought it'd be a good intro segment today for our backyard garden tour to do a peach harvest of this last peach tree that I have. And so, as I mentioned, this is a Tex Prince peach tree. I've been planning on making a video about a bunch of these fruit trees. I've got another one behind me, as you can see there. And they turned out really great this year. I've grown a whole ton load of fruit. And as I just mentioned, I'm working on a video about how I grow these fruit trees and the ways that I fertilize them and pollinate them and all the things that I've been doing over the past two to three years uh, as far as learning and also to get these fruit trees actually to go to fruit. And so normally I kind of walk around, take a look at everything all at once, but I figured we'd break down the segment today. Um, just really talk about this peach tree first. And so, these peach trees are one of the coolest things in my backyard orchard. Um, let me flip our camera around here. As I was just mentioning, this is my Tex Prince peach tree. So, it is in my 4,000 square foot backyard where I have an assortment of fruit trees and as you can see over there in the distance, a whole bunch of sunflowers, my raised bed, flowers and planters, and all sorts of interesting things. The tree behind me is one of six now peach trees that are in my backyard and I've staggered them to do harvests in late April, early May, late May, and now this one is getting harvested in early June. And this tree probably could have even gone a little bit longer. You can see my peaches are looking pretty decent. This one is a little bit on the smaller side, but um, they are starting to soften up even a little bit on the tree. And so what happens when these peaches soften up is that, uh, as you can see here, little sparrows come around and help themselves to the fruit on the tree. And so there's a bunch of things that people do to uh, avoid dealing with this. Um, you can put these little hard plastic cases around your peach, even just like hollowing out a water bottle. But of course, when, um, you know, if you look around the base of my tree, you can see some of the pits that are sitting around here on the ground from all the peaches that the sparrows help themselves to. And so, my wife and I have decided that uh, the time would be appropriate to collect these peaches before we let the sparrows get to all of them. And so, um, it's been really actually very easy to grow this peach tree <laughs> over the past two years. I planted this peach tree two years ago and I've made a whole bunch of different videos about it explaining some of the challenges that I faced. Um, I built this French drain. It's actually one of the best videos, I shouldn't say best, it is one of the most highly viewed videos on my YouTube channel. And I built this French drain to help these peach trees with drainage issues they were facing last uh, summer. And so now that it's been about a year, I think that this peach tree and it's um, pretty impressive fruit yield, honestly, for such a small tree um, is testament to how well, uh, what a good addition the French drain was. And, uh, as I mentioned, this tree is actually from Costco of all places. It's a Tex Prince peach tree. And this is also on the right, a Tex Prince peach tree, which I actually got from Green and Growing. I've got some footage here of some of the harvest that I did back in May. And all of these trees produced a ton load of fruit. I was really impressed and really pleased uh, with the outcome this year. And so I think that when I was looking for fruit trees to grow in Texas, if you've been watching the channel for some time, you'll know that I had a big peach tree back in my old house and um, really think I had a lot of success with that tree. I mean, we only had one harvest in the one season that it fruited, um, which was the, the one spring that I lived there after I planted it. But, uh, you know, I don't think it's too creepy to say that I've driven by a couple of times and seen the tree in the backyard and seen that it's got some fruit on it, um, which I can easily see from the road over the fence. I'm not like stalking the people that bought my former home, but... Uh, the bottom line being the peach trees that I've grown in central Texas have turned out really well. I think that my motivation for growing these trees is simply um, other people grow them. If you've ever been to Fredericksburg, Hill Country area, or just anywhere where there, there is uh, fruit trees in central Texas, I mean, even a good example would be um, 
uh, Georgetown's Sweet Eats Fruit Farm. My wife and I have been there many times and we recently had a chance to visit. They do peach picking in the summer where they have a lot of really mature, good looking trees. And so we're coming through here today and unfortunately, very greedy, we, um, we are muzzling the ox while it's treading out the grain. <laughs> and uh, I'll leave a couple of peaches here actually on the tree for our, our couple of sparrows remaining. But there we go. I think this is our last peach here for the season. And after this, our trees are gonna be able to divert most of their energy. We've got uh, one little peach here. I'm gonna leave for the sparrows. And after this, as I was mentioning, our trees are gonna be able to divert their energy, now that they're not focused on fruit production, into growing uh, new growth for next year's harvest. This green wood that's coming out right here is this kind of green, really young shoot. Um, what's another good example? I think I saw one over here. Yeah, right there. This green shoot that's turning red is exactly what we're looking for. Um, ultimately, the majority of the fruit grows on this kind of red wood that's about the thickness of a pencil. And uh, the more green shoots we get, um, like we got a couple here around the back, those will harden up into redwood in the seasons to come, but check that out. We got a pretty good peach harvest from our tree. This is the I guess, second or third pretty big harvest. I'm really pleased with the way my staggered peach harvest turned out this year. If you're new to the channel, we're gonna play our intro video now where you can enjoy a highlight reel from Garden Seasons Past. The spacious firmament on high With all the blue ethereal sky And spangled hands a shining frame Their great original proclaim Unwearied sun from day to day Does his creator's power display And publishes to every land The work of an almighty hand I also have a whole bunch of things in this raised bed and a couple of these pineapple plants in these whiskey barrels We've been monitoring these guys for a long time. I'm going to probably try to force them to fruit here at some point later in the summer, or earlier in the fall, so I don't have to overwinter them again. But these pineapples have been really great. And so we have all sorts of things in this race bed. I'm going to set down my peach container. Man, are those fire ants? I'm afraid to... <laughs> I'm afraid ants are going to get my peaches. Okay, so I'm going to talk about my raised bed at this point. I've got this raised bed, which I built in the fall of 2021. Yeah, it's been about a year and a half now. And there's all sorts of things in here, most of which is my winter garden, which has gone to seed. We've got parsley gone to seed, uh, cilantro gone to seed, which is now coriander. We've got lettuce gone to seed. Um, we've got um, uh, radishes gone to seed. And we also got a whole bunch of cool produce going on. In here, we've got a whole bunch of jalapenos. We've got some jalapenos that are reddening up into, if I wanted to dry those out, we'd have some nice chiles, but I think we're going to cut them down and cook with them. Um, we've got some cucumbers in the back and an assortment of really interesting things underneath this big canopy in this forest. You can see I've got some strawberries in there that the bugs are helping themselves to. And all of, all of these really interesting things, um, things that we've tried before, some things that are new, some things that are the result of neglect, like this big sunflower forest. I just love sunflowers. I don't know what is going on here. I really need to clean this up. Um, <laughs> it's obvious that at this point, some of my raised bed and the area surrounding it is a little neglected, but that's okay because um, these plants are doing super well. We have an El Nino summer and have been getting a tremendous amount of rain lately. And so I haven't had to really put up a battle um, with these tomato plants to to get this type of high yield. Um, it's been very easy this season, honestly. I have a pair of shears here. This video is mostly gonna be just kind of a harvest and I'm afraid to cut too much here, but it is what it is. Got our tomatoes looking great. I took way too much off on that, but it is what it is. I obviously have a big plant here and it's got some new tomatoes growing. 
these beefsteak tomatoes grow well when the daytime temperature is under 90 degrees. And so uh, the high is 90 today. <laughs> so hoping that some of my flowers can get pollinated and put out some additional fruit. Of course, we've got all these cherry tomatoes that are a lot easier to harvest and some that I've let sit on the vine way too long where um, insects are starting to burrow in them. So we're gonna try to be selective about the fruit that we take. And uh, I might come back through here after the fact to sort out the, uh, the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. The poisoned from the unpoisoned. We have a lot of interesting things going on. I, I harvested a head of lettuce recently and you can see it started growing some new heads and then some sort of pest came and ate it all up. So we face a whole bunch of interesting challenges here. Some of those challenges are, as I mentioned, dealing with pests. And that's no big deal. Um, part of the uh, part of the joy of gardening, I've said many times and in many different occasions, is just simply watching your plants die. And uh, my tactic is the shotgun method. I just plant a whole ton load of stuff and try to take care of it the best I can. And I seem to have gotten a pretty de decent yield from time to time, even though we do face um, deaths in the family like that cabbage over there. I also have a whole bunch of carrots that are sitting around for my winter garden harvest, which on Easter Sunday, I did a whole big spring harvest video, but as you can see, still got some uh, vegetables sitting around here, some of these carrots, and some of them are pretty big. They look great. Um, I wanted to leave a few in the ground because when you take them all at once, nobody eats that many carrots, you know what I mean? Who's gonna eat like 45 carrots? Um, when I did my harvest, I had so many, we were getting sick of carrots and sick of stew after some time, but you can see how dense it is back here. I really need to clean this up. Um, I saw some more carrots back here, so I think we're gonna go ahead and just take all the carrots today, regardless of where they're at. Ooh, these were really tiny. These are some baby carrots. I probably should have left those in, uh, but it is what it is. They're out now. I'm not gonna reset them, plus it's getting so hot. I don't, I don't think our carrots are gonna be able to make it in the long term. So baby carrot or big carrot, um, because it's so hot and because these are so shaded, I think it's time to take these out. We got a little spider hanging out here. There's all sorts of wildlife in this backyard. It's honestly a little dangerous. We've also got, um, let me, dangerous for me because I can't identify these animals. Um, <laughs> something I need to do. Uh, anyway, um, we have cucumbers. Cucumbers climbing this trellis. Cucumbers have been something that I've had a lot of success with last summer, but my last summer harvest was on July 4th. And so, um, yeah, I, uh, I think those cucumbers are gonna need a lot more time to really develop into something that we're gonna be able to enjoy. But right now they're getting started. And we got this big bowl. I thought this bowl would be big enough, but it just isn't. Um, <laughs> It looks kind of silly at this point, so I don't know if I'm going to keep using this or maybe pause the video to get something else to hold all this stuff. Uh, there's the, these spider webs. Now I, uh, <laughs> I want to do my jalapeno harvest, but I think we're going to need a different or additional bowl to manage all of this. Um, I have a good idea. I'll just start cutting the jalapenos down and then we'll, we'll bowl them up um, afterwards. So, as I've mentioned, all sorts of great things growing in here. The rain has made it so easy this summer. Um, as I mentioned, I don't have a ton of time. One of the reasons is I'm a full-time software engineer and I'm also a full-time, well, I'm a part-time seminary student. And so one of my reading assignments recently, for example, like the reading for the week was just like the entirety of the book of Psalms. And on top of it, I have a 13 month old daughter. And so um, I haven't had a tremendous amount of time for gardening lately. Um, and it's been a huge blessing just to have so much rain lately where normally last summer we had such an intense drought, having to water all the time uh, was just a genuine challenge. Um, this summer I'm really excited to not have to do that so much. Um, so that's been really cool. As I mentioned, we have all sorts of cool little companion plants, got some basil joining this, the cucumbers and the jalapenos. The basil is really more for the cucumbers because 
uh, bugs tend to not be the biggest fan of basil. Um, I think it stinks or something. It has a smell they don't like. And so, um, yeah, I've just put that basil there to kind of ward off some of the bugs surrounding uh, the situation. Like I said, we have a lot of jalapenos. You can see some are, that, that one right there is not a, I would not call that a chile. That is a, uh, that is a rotten <laughs> jalapeno um, there. We want to take that down and make sure to pick it up off the ground so that it's not um, spreading mildew or anything in our garden. As I mentioned, with all this rain, the mildew does not need any help. We're going to do our best to fight it. And so we have all these jalapenos. Delicious. We're going to collect. And like I said, I, I'm probably going to have to make a couple of trips. Um, we'll see how much food poundage we have at the end of this. But so far, we got a whole bunch of tomatoes. The audio stopped working for this segment, but I was just saying that we got a really great harvest of peaches, tomatoes, carrots, jalapenos, seven pounds in total. I'm very pleased with the way this turned out. So with that, um, we have a whole bunch of things in the back here. We're gonna weigh that up at the end. Um, and I wanna spend some time talking about seeds at this point. So there are a lot of plants here. Um, I guess I'm not gonna talk about every single one today because I mean, I have like blueberries, blackberries, but they're really just growing. They're not fruiting, they're not doing anything. I can save that for the fall garden tour when I'm actually talking about those a little more. Like I said, right now I wanna talk about seeds. And so there are three or four plants in here that have gone to seed, which are the main interesting ones. This one here is my radish plant. And uh, this is part of my winter garden and it's been in seed now for probably like three or four months. You can see when I, the seed pods it has, when you snap them open, there are, I'm hoping I'll be able to demonstrate this with just one hand. There's usually like one or two seeds in here and they look like this. They're these tiny kind of like granular little pebbles and I have these paper bags inside that I'm going to be putting my radish seeds in. That one can just join the bed. Uh, but we're going to be going through and putting these in plastic bags, collecting them for our next winter garden shortly. Um, same as this lettuce. So this is all my lettuce uh, and it is pretty crazy. It was delicious. It saved us a ton of money not buying lettuce at the store um, for quite a while. But at this point, the lettuce is um, very, very bitter because it's gone to seed. And they get these little yellow flowers on the top of them and they look kind of like dandelions when they're mature. This is mature seed right here. If we pluck it, you can see in my fingers there, there's a little bit of seed. I left some seed kind of on the head. Uh, let me get a different one so I can really properly demonstrate. So in that little kind of flower up there is all the seed. And there's a ton of seed on this lettuce. Um, it, it's going to take me genuinely a long time to collect this. I'm not going to do it on the video. I'm probably going to do it in the evening. Even right now, it is probably about 8.30 in the morning and it's already like 80 degrees. I'm covered in sweat. Um, my stand up for work, my first meeting of the morning starts at 8.45. And so I've got to go to that short meeting. This is, that's where I'm at sweat wise. Um, so it's a bit of a challenge, but like I said, over here on the end, finally, we've got coriander um, or cilantro seed which is all very mature. Now that it's all brown, I'm about to cut that down, bring that inside, get those dried out. We'll plant some of them, grind some of them up for cooking. Um, but unlike the coriander, the parsley seed isn't really ready yet. Some of this might be close to maturity, but I wouldn't even call that mature parsley seed. Um, this needs some more time. Uh, this might be right here, honestly. This is really close. If this browned out just a little bit, um, that would be ready to harvest. So once we get all of our seed, we're going to cut down all of this stuff and try to really uh, spend some time in the fall and late summer um, revitalizing the bed, aerating the soil, uh, all that kind of good stuff. But for right now, I think summer is one of my favorite seasons of the year. It's an opportunity to do these um, harvests. And this, of course, will not be our only summer harvest, seeing as we have so many jalapenos left on both of these plants, cucumbers coming up, and a whole bunch more tomatoes that I didn't even, uh, even touch today. So it's 
It's really exciting. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about these sunflowers I'm growing over here. Man, these sunflowers are crazy. Like once again, for scale, like I'm 5'6". This fence is like six foot. And uh, as I mentioned, I don't know if the audio turned out well there. I'm That fence back there is six foot. And that sunflower plant's a good 11, 12 feet. This is grown from one of the seeds that I harvested a couple of years back from my mammoth gold sunflower. And uh, its descendants look like they were pollinated with seeds from the side of the road because they have really big sunflower heads, but also like not as big as the ones on the side of the road. This one's like a mutant, like kind of like two in one. <laughs> um, uh, and so, it's really, really interesting. I've had friends come over, we entertain from time to time, and they'll comment on how interesting the sunflowers are. Some of my wife's friends will make a bouquet of sunflowers, and it's getting to the point that probably around the 4th of July we'll do a sunflower seed video. A lot of these sunflowers, which if you're not aware, sunflowers are actually a ton of little small flowers within the, the center of the flower itself. I think this one you can see it most clearly, some of the seeds coming up underneath. And so... I planted these seeds about two years ago. They didn't come up last year, but here they are now. And um, as I mentioned, we've done a harvest on some of these other peach trees in my backyard over the past couple of months. Keep your eyes peeled in the next two weeks. I wanna make a how I grow peach trees in, or how I grow peaches in Central Texas video, where I'm gonna be talking about some of the peaches that these trees produced. Um, this one actually didn't produce anything. But those three up there are royal zest trees. They did produce. And as I've already mentioned, the Tex Princes on the other side of the yard did great this season. And then so wrapping up, I want to go to my front yard and talk a little bit about that. And normally there's not a lot to talk about, but for our summer garden tour, there really is. Um, I've got these three crepe myrtles in my front yard. Uh, this one was surrounded by sunflowers recently. And so it is not doing so hot. It's struggling a little bit, but... Um, I cut all the sunflowers back to give it an opportunity to catch up to the growth levels that these two are at over here. And I'm hoping these continue to mature over the course of uh, the next couple of years. Finally, in my front yard, I had this wonderful blue bonnet meadow a couple of months ago. In March, April, I made a video about how I grow blue bonnets. And this video um, turned out really, really great. I thought that uh, my front yard blue bonnet meadow looked awesome and now I've cut back all my blue bonnets. And so this is where we're at today. And there's this kind of like dead space in front of my front yard garden bed, but that's really okay. Um, a lot of the grass that was over there is growing back. And you can see we've got these wonderful sweet potato foliage filling up this lime green uh, stuff, filling up the bottom of the bed where of course there's still like a little bit of weeds poking through, but um, yeah, it looks great. And so this is at this point, the remnants of the blue bonnets from the front yard. This is all that's left. And I saved these because I wanted to explain how the blue bonnets put down their seed because there's actually a ton of seed all over this area. And we're going to get another blue bonnet meadow next year. And what's going on here, we have these little seed pods that dry out. And eventually, if you kind of shake it, it sounds a little bit like a maraca in there. The seeds are loose. And if you break them open, which I'm really struggling to break this one because it's kind of dry, but not fully. <laughs> I'm gonna have to use two hands, hold on. I'm afraid to spill the seeds as soon as I break it open. Here we go. When you break it open, there are these little seed pods, and inside you've got four or five blue bonnet seeds. Let me get the light on there, there you go. And so these seeds are landing in my lawn, and as the grass recovers, eventually um, in the spring, we should have another round of blue bonnets. I've also got some a morning glory, which is uh, this kind of green canopy right there, and it is climbing my other big sunflower plant, maybe about 10 feet high. If you really look in there, you can see like kind of a jack in the beanstalk thing going on here, and so, this whole front yard bed um, is obviously all just ornamentals and I really have enjoyed um, getting to put something that's really green and attractive in front of my house. 
So that concludes my summer garden tour. If you're still watching at this point in the video, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a joy and privilege to share this hobby with you guys. And for those of you who are new or those of you who are experienced gardeners, thank you again for watching Austin, Texas Gardening.